Hey guys, it's Wasim from Curious Doc. This is the second video about the biomechanics of sprinting. If you haven't watched the first one, go watch that now by clicking the link in the description. Just as a quick recap, there's the acceleration phase and the maintenance phase of running. In the acceleration phase, the goal is to lean forward as much as possible to maximize the horizontal force vector, but not too much that you stumble. Once you've reached max velocity, you reach the maintenance phase where your body straightens out. Here you want your foot to land underneath your center of mass so that you're not applying a braking force in front of you when your foot lands. Following this, you drive forward with all your muscles, ending in something called triple extension. Finally, in the recovery stage, the legs should be tucked in close to the body to minimize the moment of inertia and get the leg back to the starting position as soon as possible. So we've covered the legs really well, but one of the most overlooked parts of running is the arms. The goal of your arm movements is to counteract the torque produced by the legs. Try doing this exercise. Keep one leg planted and do a running motion with the other leg. Look at my shoulders. They rotate in the opposite direction to the legs to balance out the torque. Now, if you cross the midline with your legs, you'll notice the arms will also start to cross the midline. And if we cross the midline with the arms, the legs will follow. This goes for running too. If your arms cross the midline while running, the legs will tend to cross the midline and push into the ground at an angle. As you can imagine, this isn't a very biomechanically favorable way of running because a lot of your energy is wasted into sideways motion. In other words, if you keep your arms moving in a straight line, the legs will follow. So as we can see, the arms will follow the pace of the legs, but the opposite is also true in that the legs will follow the pace of the arms. In this way, it's beneficial to move your arms through the entire cycle as quickly as possible. One way to do this is to develop the fast twitch muscle fibers around the shoulder by training them. This means lots of explosive exercises with high repetitions. The other way is to keep your elbows at 90 degrees at all times. There's a natural tendency to extend the elbows at the end of the swing because of centrifugal forces. But unfortunately, this slows down the swing because you spend more time bending the elbow. By keeping the elbows bent, it minimizes the moment of inertia. Just like how we keep our legs tucked during the recovery phase of running, keeping your arms tucked close to your body allows them to go through the swing phase faster. And that's it for this video, but the algorithm thinks you'll like this video next, so why not give it a try? Thank you.